Hello and welcome to HITC Sport, right, 2020 is in the books now, a year that will be remembered for Liverpool winning the Premier League, Messi almost leaving, Zoom quizzes, Tiger King and lockdowns, but at least that's all in the past now. Oh, n never mind. Well, the show must go on here at HITC, so today I'm going to grade every Premier League club's 2020 from A plus to F. Just how good was your club during the entire calendar year of 2020? And how on earth am I going to grade Sheffield United's year? They were class one minute, now they're struggling the over 50s walking league up against Billy and his dodgy hip. Arsenal C plus. A lot has been said about Arsenal in recent weeks. Mikel Arteta has been labelled a fraud compared to a PA teacher. The bloke's even been clinging on to his job. Then they won a few games and everything died down a bit. It's almost as if people were overreacting. But overall in 2020, it's actually been much more of a mixed bag. They were excellent during the second half of last season after Arteta replaced the desperate vampire look Unai Emery, having sucked the blood out of Arsenal Football Club. In 2020, Arsenal got 32 points last season, which was only bettered by the two Manchester clubs in Liverpool. The issue has been this season, where the Gunners have floated so close to the relegation zone that Sam Allardyce had the audacity to say they were in a relegation dogfight. Arsenal should be doing better, but for a strong start of the year they get a modest C+. Aston Villa B-. Aston Villa have basically had the anti-Arsenal in 2020. They were awful at the start of the year, but since the new season started they've been excellent. And to think, it all could have been so different had goal line technology not packed in against Sheffield United, an error that effectively kept Villa in the Premier League. If that goal had been given, Villa would have been resigned at the history books, relegated to the championship, where they would never get a mention on this channel again until they won promotion, because apparently all we talk about was the Premier League. But this season, Villa have been bloody brilliant, and a lot of it's down to the recruitment. They got a proper striker in Ollie Watkins, and had a massive upgrade in midfield, swapping one Chelsea flop for another as Drinkwater departed and Barkley arrived. Villa have had a decent 2020 when you look back, but it all could have been changed had that goal been given. The lucky buggers. Brighton D minus. Brighton have been crap all year to be honest with you, but it doesn't matter because they pass the ball quite nicely. Honestly, they're so easy on the eye, yet when they get near the opposition goal they crumble like your nan's favourite dessert covered in custard. During all of 2020, the Seagulls got just 31 points, a tally that seen them fighting for relegation the entire year. In fact, 31 points for 2020 is the second worst in the entire division, if you ignore the promoted teams of course. As I always say, Brighton are pretty on the eye, they've got a great style, but no killer instinct whatsoever. It's like bagging a date with the prettiest girl around only to find out she's as dull as dishwater. A D- for Brighton, whose results don't match their performances. Burnley C Shock, middle of the road Burnley get a middle of the road C. Unless they're curtled by an injury crisis, you know what you're going to get from Burnley. They'll be rock solid at the back, pass it about surprisingly well, work it wide to the winger and score from across, then at the end of the game Sean Dyche will mourn about something in a really passive aggressive manner. Last season they had a great end of the campaign, picking up 30 points from January onwards, and they surely should have been doing a lot better this season had they not been missing so many key players at the start of the campaign. Now they've had a takeover, so maybe 2021 could be the year Burnley kick on from the middle of the road, or at least start assigning better players than Dale Stevens. Chelsea B Chelsea are a strange one to grade over 2020. At times they've been excellent, then other times you wonder how on earth Frank Lampard even got the job in the first place. Then you remember he scored hundreds of goals for Chelsea and realise that's the reason why. The Blues actually got less points than Arsenal at the back end of last season in 2020, and the loss in the FA Cup final further damaged what was a promising start at Stamford Bridge for Frank. Even this season they were being talked up as title challengers one minute, the next Lampard's clinging on for his job, and people are wondering if Timo Werner is a bigger flop than Andrei Shevchenko. Overall though, Chelsea have been decent, ending 2020 with 57 points, which is the fourth best for a club who spent the entire year in the top flight, which is basically where they are right now. But with the money spent over the summer, people were expecting a bit more. Crystal Palace D Palace are a weird club, like they never truly seem to be in danger, but when you break down their results over the past year, they've actually been pretty poor for the whole 12 months. It seems as though they win when it matters, and only then. They ended last season in 14th place, and they ended 2020 in 15th. They basically just live outside the relegation zone without the fear of going down. Statistically though, they've been one of the worst teams in the Premier League in 2020, ending the year with just 35 points. In fact, out of the teams that stayed up, no one got fewer points last season in 2020, paying up just 16. For that, Palace get a very disappointing D, the kind your missus gets every Friday night. Everton B Overall, 2020 has been pretty decent for the Toffees, in what was a strong first year in charge for manager Carlo Ancelotti. 
although the end of last season was far from as high standards. They ended the campaign in 12th, but with how they performed this season, they're well worthy of a B grade. While in the end they might just finish 7th like always, right now it looks like they've got a serious chance of qualifying for Europe, and that's even with James Rodriguez blowing cold since the weather turned cold itself. So on, please get the man some gloves for goodness sake. It's been a solid year for Everton, who finally looked to be on the up again after a few years of struggling, and even getting so desperate they had to hire Big Sam. Fulham C+. I feel like I've said this for every club, but Fulham are another hard one to grade. Obviously the start of the year in the Championship, where they finished 4th to eventually win the playoffs and secure promotion, and ensured this idiot didn't have to get a tattoo of Pontus pissing Janssen. In 2020, Fulham actually got 39 Championship points, which were only 3 behind title winners Leeds, which shows how strong an end of the season Scott Parker's side had. They've found things a lot harder in the Premier League though, although the main issue seems to be scoring from 12 yards. Maybe they need Bruno Fernandes to come in and show them what to do. Although I don't think Adam Ola Luckman needs a genius to tell him that penalty he took against West Ham was the worst thing he's probably ever done in his life. Leeds United A They won the championship with relative ease and now they're taking the Premier League by storm. Of course I've got to give Leeds an A. They're such a joy to watch. Honestly, I'd say they're the most exciting team around this year, probably just ahead of Southampton. And it's all the more impressive considering the bunch of players that Marcelo Bielsa's got. Seriously, I don't think many of them would be in the Premier League had it not been for Bielsa. Sure, they've been battered a few times in the Premier League, but it's a small price to pay considering how exhilarating they normally are. Without a doubt, they get an A. Leicester City, B+. For all Leicester have been unreal this season, they were actually pretty terrible at the start of the year. I mean, they completely bottled Champions League qualification. They seemed nailed on to finish in the top four, only to end the campaign in fifth. In fact, they only got 20 Premier League points in 2020 last season, which is only one more than Newcastle managed. This season though they're back to their best, it's even more impressive when you consider the injuries they've had. But the new signings have impressed, and as always, Jamie Vardy has continued to score goals. But considering their seismic collapse last season, the best I can give them is a B+. Liverpool A+. While 2019 was a better year in terms of performances, 2020 will always be remembered as the year that Liverpool won the Premier League. And no one won more points in 2020 than Liverpool. They start the year in first place, and that's where they ended it even if the gap at the top is nowhere near as big. Klopp's men won 79 points during the entire year, 13 more than their nearest rivals, which is why they're still the favourites to win back-to-back -back Premier League titles, even if they do have a bit more competition this year. Manchester City A-. While all they've won's a Carabao Cup, it hasn't actually been the worst year in the world for Man City. Sure, they got nowhere near the title last season, but a lot of the damage was done in 2019. As for this season, sure they struggled early on, but the regroup was started with themselves as title contenders once again, and I think a lot of people would actually make them favourites right now. But overall in 2020, they racked up 66 points, the second best in the Premier League. So as a calendar year, things probably haven't been as bad as it seemed. Manchester United A Despite Oli being on the brink so many times he's got his own personal parking space at the job centre, Man United have actually had an excellent 2020, and I've got no idea how it's happened. Particularly in lockdown at the start of the year, they were incredible. Greenwood, Rashford, Fernandez, Martial, the four of them couldn't stop scoring, it was actually scary. Sure they flopped in the Europa and now they've crashed out of the Champions League as well, but in the Premier League they've been excellent, and even then they've had rough patches, I mean they lost 6-1 to a Jose Mourinho side. Yet somehow, the Red Devils have emerged as title contenders, and in 2020 racked up 65 points to put them just one point behind their noisy neighbours for the calendar year. I don't know how, and whisper it quietly, but Man United might be on the brink of something quite special. Or they'll lose a couple of games and normality will be restored. Who knows? Newcastle United D+. I'll try and sum up Newcastle's 2020 pretty quickly. If it wasn't for Callum Wilson, they'd probably be bottom of the league right now. How they fluked so many points is anyone's guess. Never have I seen a football team so bad at playing football. They set up defensively and have the busiest goalkeepers in the league, all the while they barely create any chances up the other end. In 2020, Steve Bruce's side got 38 points overall, which is the bare minimum needed to survive in the Premier League, which is exactly what Mike Ashley wants. Yet all the pundits will tell you that Steve Bruce is doing a wonderful job. Wind your necks in, man, no he isn't. In fact, if you want me to do a lengthier video on the true Newcastle under Steve Bruce, let me know in the comments below because I'm absolutely dying to do it. Sheffield United, D-. Christ, what a fall from grace this has been. Sheffield United were gunning for Europe last season, now all the wants a win. The Blades won 27 Premier League points in 2020, yet only two of them have come this season. 
Chris Wilder's side are staring relegation in the face, and it seems pretty likely that they'll break the record for the worst ever Premier League points tally, which currently belongs to Derby County with 11. If they hadn't been so good last season, I'd give them an F. Let's move on. Southampton, A-. minus. Psst. You. Yeah, you. Come here. Do you want to know a secret? Okay, but you can't tell anyone else, right? Southampton lost 9-0 to Leicester in October 2019. Oh, you knew that already because everyone mentions it all of the time. Honestly, I bet when you drive into Southampton, the comedy automatically gets pumped into your radio. It's a tired old story, but since then the Saints have been excellent, and 2020 was a year to remember. In total, they got 56 points, which was more than Leicester, Arsenal, Everton, Tottenham and Wolves, proving just how good a year it's been. And not only have they been getting good results, they've developed a rock and roll style of play that's a joy to watch. They've came a long way since the lost 9-0, and yes, I'm going to keep going on about it for the rest of time like everybody else. Tottenham B. Remember the other week when we were all talking about Tottenham winning the title? Christ, that was weird. Well, now things have settled down, Spurs ended 2020 in 7th place, which is actually one position lower than the end of the previous campaign. Spurs are a hard one to work out, as one minute they look the real deal, blowing teams away with Harry Kane and Song Hyun linking up like Laurel and Hardy, then the next thing you know the rest of the team are playing like the bloody Chuckle Brothers. Tottenham have had great moments in 2020, but overall it's been actually quite an average year, or maybe just above average. Either way, they're getting a B. West Brom, C-. It was a year that started with hopes of promotion and ended with Big Sam coming to try and save the day. Slavon Bilic didn't deserve the sack, but he did nearly blow promotion and in the Premier League they've been less than impressive. But then again, he was hardly backed by the owners, who just brought back a load of loan players and Branislav Ivanovic, who's so old he's probably already had his Pfizer vaccine. Will Big Sam keep West Brom up? I kinda hope he doesn't, sorry West Brom fans. West Ham C+. Yet again we've got another team with contrasting fortunes. If it hadn't been for Mikel Antonio last season, the Hammers probably would have gone down. Now this season, they look a million times better. In fact, I'm sure I said West Ham would go down in my predictions video, and that's not looking likely at all. David Moyes is finally getting a tune out of this West Ham team, but a turgid start of the year means they only get a C+. Wolves B-. As always, we end with Wolves, a club who can look back on 2020 with a lot of fondness, but also some concern. Last season they came 7th with 29 points won in 2020, but this season they're not quite as ruthless, notably feeling the loss of the departed Diogo Jota and the injured Raul Jimenez. They've had a lot of near misses this season where results just haven't gone their way, while their best of the rest is is severely under threat. Maybe they need another Portuguese superstar to save the day, maybe a former Real Madrid man, a man who's played for his country, a man who's won trophies. That's right, they need Fabio Coentrao. So there we have it, that's every club's 2020 graded. Let me know your grades in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to HITC Sport. And until next time, we will see you around.